What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and in continuing my series of Disney movie reviews I'm here to let you know that Home on the Range is no perfect movie. Although chances are you probably already knew that. It takes place in the Old West and it centers on three cows played by Roseanne, Judy Dench, and Jennifer Tilly who embark on a journey to capture the bounty of a cattle rustler played by Randy Quaid so that they can save their farm from foreclosure. Now I said in my Black Cauldron review if I watched this one and found it worse than Cauldron, I would take back what I said about it being the worst Disney movie I've ever seen. But that's not happening, because while this is also bottom of the barrel when it comes to Disney, there are a few things about Home on the Range that I honestly enjoyed on a guilty pleasure level. For starters, I do like a couple of the songs. Little Patch of Heaven has this nice, upbeat, but still really peaceful feel to it, and Katie Lang does a really good job singing it. The yodeling song and the sequence within it was easily the main highlight of the movie in regards to animation, music, and comedy, and it's the one moment where Randy Quaid really gets to shine in the role of this villain, because outside of that, he's a typical short-tempered, greedy bastard. And out of all the characters, the one that I appreciated the most and felt like had a consistent arc was Jennifer Tilly as the more gullible and naive cow of the group. Everyone thinks she's dim-witted when she follows their orders, but whenever she has to take charge as the movie progresses and becomes more resourceful, she earns their respect as time goes by. That was an arc that I really appreciated watching. But outside of that, this movie's major problem is that it is so rushed to the point where conflict and character development are almost non-existent. Every character is either really annoying or only has one personality trait, you don't spend enough time in each location to really feel the stakes. You don't really spend enough time on this farm to really feel bad when it's about to be foreclosed. All the animals outside of the cows who talk are really just generic comedy tropes. Roseanne is her usual self. She's really sarcastic. She's really loudmouthed. And sometimes that can work if people give her jokes that are funny. Looking at her utter and her saying, yeah, they're real, doesn't really count. There is one joke where she calls a horse Stallion of the Sim Moron. If you get that joke, good, because that's actually kind of a decent jab at DreamWorks. But I didn't really feel the, the tension or the conflict between her and Judy Dench as this, basically the head cow of the group, who's nothing really but a sarcastic grump. And... Oddly enough, they don't really give her that many reasons to feel grumpy with Roseanne to begin with. You can say all you want about Roseanne's character or her as a real-life person. It's not very hard, but even when her jokes aren't funny, she is a wholesome and innocent character. After all, she is the one who's like, we're not going to sit back and take it. We're going to fight. We're going to save our farm. We're going to do everything we can in order to improve our situation. And Dench is the one who just really encourages people to sit back and just hope for the best, even though it's clearly not going to work out. Which really doesn't make me understand why she's protesting every single time they go out on this journey in order to get closer to the rustler. She tries to say that Roseanne's just out for personal vengeance because her backstory is she was on a farm that was rustled, a backstory that has like no weight to it because they never talk about it. And when she says it to them, they don't give any reactions. But again, like Roseanne's the one positively encouraging everyone to stand up for themselves and take action. So what's there really to protest about? And they also try to make it seem like Dench is jealous of Roseanne just because she charmed everyone with her sense of humor. But again, it was completely innocent. What's wrong with that? Jealousy is not enough of a reason to understand where you're coming from. If anything, it just makes Judy Dench seem like a bully to Roseanne. Really think about that. Cuba Gunning Jr. is also in this movie as a horse who thinks he's incredibly badass, despite the fact that the only thing close to badass that he does is make a lot of karate moves and do Bruce Lee screams at a really, really loud high pitch. Dude was basically Terran from Black Cauldron, except even whinier, even louder, and even more annoying. And he didn't really have anything to learn until the very last 20 minutes of the movie, and by then, I already checked out on him as a character. That's really all I can say about Home on the Range. It does have its moments. It has a couple decent songs and some actors who are 
trying to do something with the material, but half of them are also clearly trying to please their kids and grandkids because they don't make enough movies that they can watch, which doesn't doesn't hold up after a few years. In a few years, they'll just be like, why did you make this? And why did we ask for this? I don't know. That's really all I got. So I'm going to give Home on the Range a 2 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Home on the Range, does it still do anything for you? If it does, let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to stay tuned for more Disney reviews, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.